Section 1.11 is about wireless principles. Wi-Fi uses radio frequencies to send data. These frequencies are divided into channels and devices connect using these channels. In wireless networking, Wi-Fi channels can overlap and interfere with each other. Non-overlapping channels reduce interference and ensure more stable wireless communication. The 2.4 GHz band has 14 channels, but in most countries, only channels 1 to 11 are used. Each channel is 20 or 40 MHz wide, and they overlap with each other. Only three channels don't overlap, channel 1, 6, and 11. These channels are spaced far enough apart that their signals don't interfere with each other. Why is overlapping bad? Overlapping channel is devices talking over each other and it means slower network and higher interference. Here is a real world example of 2.4 GHz channel. Imagine you live in an apartment building with multiple Wi-Fi networks. Your router is set to channel 1, your neighbor's router is on channel 2, and another neighbor uses channel 3. Then, all of your Wi-Fi networks will overlap and interfere with each other. The best way is to use channel 1 for your router. One neighbor uses channel 6 and the other uses channel 11. All spaced out with no overlap. Then, we have the 5 GHz band, which has many more channels and is less crowded. These channels are wider apart, which means more non-overlapping options. The 5 GHz band is split into 24 individual channels with a bandwidth of 20 MHz. Examples of common non-overlapping 5 GHz channels are 36, 40, 44, 48 for the lower band, and 149, 153, 157, 161 for upper band. These channels are non-overlapping at 20 MHz width and many routers can use 40 or 160 MHz widths for faster speeds but fewer non-overlapping options. For example, at your office, there are five access points. To avoid overlap, AP1 can use channel 36, AP2 channel 52, AP3 uses channel 136, AP4 channel 149, and AP5 channel 157. This allows multiple access points to run at full speed without stepping on each other's signals. Here's a comparison between 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz, along with when to use each one depending on your needs. Choose 2.4 if you need greater coverage or are farther from the router. Or your signal has to pass through thick walls or multiple floors. Or if you're using basic tasks like browsing, email, and not many other devices are on it. Or you can be setting up smart home devices like cameras, which often only support 2.4 GHz. Here is a real-world example. You live in a three-story house and want Wi-Fi in the backyard. 2.4 GHz is better for reaching those far corners. And you can choose 5 GHz if you want higher speeds for video streaming, gaming, or video calls. Or your device and router support 5 GHz and are within close range. And there are many nearby Wi-Fi networks causing interference. For example, you're gaming or streaming 4K in the same room as your router. 5 GHz will give you faster, more stable performance. So to summarize the key differences, 2.4 GHz has lower data rate and larger coverage area. 5 GHz has higher data rate with smaller coverage area. And for best practice, modern routers also offer both 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz simultaneously. Your device chooses the best band based on signal and needs. 
And here's an exam tip to remember. 2.4 GHz has non-overlapping channels, which are channels 1, 6, and 11. Next is SSID. SSID is the name of a wireless network. It distinguishes one wireless LAN from another. Devices use SSID to join a wireless network. And routers or access points can be configured with multiple SSIDs for different purposes. For example, guest network versus internal network. For exam tip, if asked how clients identify the network, look for SSID as the correct answer. Then there's radio frequency. RF is the wireless medium used to carry data over air using electromagnetic waves. This is measured in frequency or gigahertz and signal strength or dBm. The frequency bands in Wi-Fi are 2.4, 5, and 6 gigahertz. 2.4 has greater range and more interference. 5 has less range, less interference, but more channels. And 6 has even less congestion. Here are some key RF concepts to remember. Attenuation is signal loss over distance or through walls. Interference is overlapping channels or devices operating on the same frequency. Reflection Refraction, diffraction, are how RF signals behave when hitting surfaces. For exam tip, know that 2.4 GHz has more interference but better range, and 5 GHz has less interference but shorter range. And last in this section is encryption. Encryption secures wireless communication from unauthorized access. Here are the types of Wi-Fi encryption. First, we have the wired equivalent privacy. This is weak and outdated and avoid using this one. Then we have Wi-Fi protected access or WPA. This is an improvement over WEP but still weak by today's standards. Next is WPA2. This has strong encryption using AES or Advanced Encryption Standard and is still widely used. AES is a widely used symmetric encryption algorithm for securing data. It's considered a robust and secure method for encrypting and decrypting information. And last is WPA3. This is the latest and most secure and uses SAE or Simultaneous Authentication of Equals. SAE is a password-based authentication and key establishment protocol used in Wi-Fi networks, particularly in WPA3 personal. It's a crucial component of WPA3's enhanced security features, especially its protection against dictionary attacks. For exam tip, if asked to choose the most secure wireless encryption, the answer is WPA3, if available, or WPA2 with AES. What are non-overlapping channels in 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi? Identifies the name of a wireless network that devices can connect to. Channel with higher data rate but shorter coverage. Channel with lower data rate but larger coverage. Medium used to transmit data wirelessly between devices. What frequencies are commonly used in Wi-Fi?
the most secure Wi-Fi encryption standard today.